These are called typewriters. Once upon a time, people actually used these funny little machines to create written documents. That was before the invention of personal computers and word processors. Typewriting, as they say, has come a long way, baby. Today, we're going to take a look at the latest and newest in word processors on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 and 2400 baud modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chiffe, and this is Gary Kildall. Gary, we're talking about word processors today, and a couple of years ago there was a novelty item called the Peter McWilliams Word Processor. You sent in 99 cents, and this is what you got. And it said to insert, use this end, and to delete, <laughs> use that end. And of course, early word processors didn't do a whole lot more than that. You made your mistakes on the screen instead of on the paper, perhaps. They're much more sophisticated these days. In fact, some people are saying word processors are now evolving into desktop publishers. Well, Stuart, desktop publishing is certainly an evolution from word processors, but it's a lot more. An integration of text and graphics, taking the whole structure of the document into account, page layout, things of this sort. Desktop publishing is inherently more complicated. Uh, word processing, uh, well, we still have a long way to go with that. Ease of use, uh, extra facilities, and so forth. So I, I think we're going to see word processing processors uh, around for quite some time. We're going to take a look at some of the top rated word processors to see what's new and what's best for you. Now, a good word processor can be expensive, but there is a low cost way to get a word processor through shareware. And we're going to begin with a report on that low cost alternative. Most software packages come with a stern warning about making more than your fair share of copies. So why does a word processor like PCWrite ask its owners to make as many copies as they like? Because PCWrite belongs to a class of programs called shareware, and its success depends on as many people as possible trying it out for themselves. I think that's really the heart of what's nice about it, that, that you really can try it out at some length and really say, yes, this is what I want, or, well, after all, no, this isn't what I want. And so I was clear I wanted it by the time I sent my money in. If you can't get a copy from a friend, PCWrite diskettes are available from the company for $16. If you decide you like it, you send in the $89 registration fee, in exchange for which you get a manual and updates. PCWrite is not a bare bones program. It includes a spelling checker, mail merge, and laser printer support. The program allows for some split screen editing and custom character sets. And PC Write is written in Pascal, and I think it's very fast and efficient because it's done by one programmer. My experience has been in the computer field, if you, when you find a program that's really a pleasure to use and really rewarding and satisfying, uh, it usually has just one programmer behind it. The shareware idea seems far removed from the corporate mainstream of commercial software, explained in part by its unusual origins. Shareware has its roots in ham radio, um, and the original people that uh, developed shareware concept really came from the bulletin board. And within amateur radio, um, the very being of amateur radio is that the airwaves are free, and it's an exchange of information. So that's its roots. <laughs> Joining us in the studio now is Walt Feigenson, Vice President for Product Marketing with MicroPro, makers of WordStar, and Dan Lunt, Vice President for Marketing with WordPerfect. Gary. Stuart, I think it was last time we did a show on word processing. One of the guests said there are 600 word processes on the <laughs> At market. At least. <laughs> Walt, how do you keep, um, well, what kind of features do you really need to have in a, a word processor nowadays to keep it on top of the stack? Well, you know, it, there's some sort of magical way of determining this, but uh, the primary method that we use is listening to the users. Mm -hmm. and. 
uh, just as everybody in the industry does. We've got, uh, in this industry, probably the most vocal users that you'll find any place. They love to give you suggestions, and all you have to do is listen to them. So what sort of things? Spelling checkers, we've seen spelling checkers be important. What are the kinds of things or, or features you need, Dan? Well, as we listen to our users, we find that the, a large number of them are attorneys, uh, accountants, professional people, and they all have features that seem to be directed specifically at their industry. Uh, for example, we received a lot of requests for a line numbering feature and for a table of authorities uh, generation in WordPerfect from the attorneys. And uh, we feel like that's a very important process of getting that feedback from the users. So specific markets will tell you a lot about the features you need. That's true. Well, you have a new version, I understand, of the uh, WordStar. A lot of people have been waiting for that. <laughs> it's been a long wait, but thank God it's here. Okay. Can you show us how it works? Sure. Well, we've um, uh, got it on the screen now, and the opening menu shows that it still looks like WordStar. It, we've uh, managed to retain the classic look, the classic feel of the product that's been used by uh, millions of people at this point, and yet we've added 125 new features. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, editing a, a short document, and the first thing you'll notice is that we can point to the file name, which is something that many, many people have asked for over the years. Uh, the menus look very WordStar-like, uh, and yet we've, as I said, added many, many new features. Uh, as in the past, we are able to turn the menus off, which I'm going to do for this demonstration so we can see more of the document. Uh, the first thing you'll see there is that we've got uh, a, some extended characters on the screen, and I'm going to show you an extension of that, which is I'm, uh, what we call line and box drawing. Uh, very, very uh, hot topic in the word processing industry at the moment. What we've done is uh, I've, I've just executed a macro that drew the box around that. You could do it manually as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also added a very, very fast in-context spelling checker, and we're actually going through the document uh, now the spelling checker uh, has flagged a word that it doesn't understand, the name of a city, and we have the option of putting in any of those uh, choices uh, just by typing a number. In this case, I'm not going to do that, but I will show you another feature of the spelling checker, and that is its phonetic lookup. For those of us who are god-awful spellers like I am, uh, just get close to the word. In this case, we're looking up the word pneumonia, and I've typed in N-E-W-M-O-A-N-Y-A. Barely close. <laughs> which, is, which is as far as you can get. And then just a blink of the eye, you'll see the product comes back and says that the suggestion mm -hmm. is pneumonia spelled correctly. Uh, what I will do next is to show you the thesaurus, and we are using a very uh, elegant thesaurus. Uh, what I've done is I've positioned the cursor over uh, a word, and I've pressed uh, the hot key for it, and we've come up with a series of suggestions. If I want to replace the word I have, I just press a carriage return, and the suggestion mm -hmm. goes in. The thesaurus also lets me uh, uh, page through the words in the, in the uh, database so that I can actually look up, uh, chain the lookups in, in the, uh, uh, I'm sorry, in the, in the uh, uh, thesaurus operation and keep looking until I find the word that, I'm, that, that I want. Mm -hmm. So we've got a very fast spelling checker, a thesaurus, uh, integrated math, uh, uh, shorthand, what we call keyboard macros. Uh, 125 new features. Of things well, I'm going to ask you to slide in. the keyboard over to Dan, and Dan, if you can get word perfect, <coughs> excuse me, loaded up there. Oh, I sh shouldn't do that to you. Okay. <laughs> can you listen and type at the same time? Okay, there good. Go. good. Well, while we're things. waiting for Dan to get the word perfect loaded, you say mm -hmm. you pay attention to, and you have very vocal users, word processor users are, of course. What do you hear most? I mean, what's the biggest complaint about, about the old WordStar, for example? Well, WordStar hadn't changed for a long time, and the technology changed over the period of years since our last update, and there were, there were literally hundreds of things that people asked for. It was not a hard hard choice to figure out what people yeah, were looking yeah. for. And, uh, on screen attributes, the ability to un undelete something that you've uh, accidentally mm -hmm. erased, yeah. uh, the uh, integrated spell checker, thesaurus, math capability, things like that. Okay, Dan, now you've updated WordPerfect too, which has risen to the top of the pile in Gary's <laughs> terms. And show us some of, the, some of the features that you think make WordPerfect special. Okay. Um, we believe when we designed WordPerfect initially, one of the things we were trying to attempt was to make the word processor look as much like a typewriter as possible. And when the screen for WordPerfect comes up, you see what would appear to be a blank sheet of paper in the typewriter, and you're now able to begin to type. There's nothing that you need to go to, uh, through before that. We've gone through a very simple interface and implemented uh, a, a single keystroke approach to all of the different features in WordPerfect. So as I type and I want bold text to appear on the screen, I simply press the bold key, bolding appears on the screen. If I want underlining to appear, I press the underline key, underline appears on the screen, and so on. For example, you can also do uh, centering yeah, Excuse me, Dan, your code for underline here is the change in color, so our audience That's understands right. that That's red right. right now represents underlining. That's correct. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. You want to show us indent? 
It also shows indent. I could do numbered paragraphs, for example, by pressing the number and then pressing the indent key. As I type at this point, then the, the uh, paragraph automatically wraps to the correct place until I press the enter key. Now, these are simple features, but our approach to it has been simple and elegant. I think that's part of why the product has been successful. What about your approach to thesaurus? How are you handling that? Our thesaurus is handled. Let me bring up a, a sample document here that we can look at. Um, doing a retrieve text on spell. Now, all I have to do is point at any particular word in that document or just type a word and then press the thesaurus key, and it will give me a list of alternatives to that word. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that distinguishes our thesaurus from a lot of them is that it also gives a list of antonyms uh, along with mm -hmm. the synonyms, mm -hmm. and you can also chain through the different word meanings if you like also. What about doing work in columns? I know that's one of the features you brag about, and how easy is it to do that? Columns are very easy to do, and we show columns on the screen. I'm going to retrieve a, a document that demonstrates some of the column work that we do. This particular file shows our newspaper style columns. In other words, text from column one snakes Snaking to around. column two and on to column three. Uh, it's very simple to set up and it handles all of the formatting for this information automatically. If I move down and want to add some text at this point, I type and it snakes the columns around mm -hmm. and shows me what's mm -hmm. going on as I go. Now, one of the, uh, seems to be the differentiating factors, what we call word processors now, I guess, in desktop publishing is, is sort of the graphics. And so uh, how, how is that uh, handled with your word processors now? Do you have any graphics capability? Right now, we have very limited graphics capability. We can handle graphs that are in a character format, and we can also block a space within the document and allow a, a, a product like Inset to, to put a graph inside a word processing document and print it. However, our directions in the future are very much aimed towards graphics and text being mixed together. Well, real quick, WordStar. Well, we've done basically the same thing. You can put in character graphics, and you can also, we've al actually allocated 10 function keys to the line and box drawing characters. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, you know, and Inset also works, of course, with, uh, with, with WordStar. You guys are the two biggies. Thank you very much for being here. We have two more top-rated word processors coming up, so stay with us. Joining us in the studio now is Louis Levin, product manager with Microsoft, and next to Louis is Jim Kessler, product manager with Office Solutions. Gary. Uh, Lewis, uh, it seems like a good word processor now has to have at least a spelling checker, hyphenation, a thesaurus in it. We've seen that so far. Uh, what, is, what else do you really need to have a quality product now? Well, we at Microsoft think that the word processor should help you as you write. You're not just pounding the keys. It would be really nice if the word processor could help you organize the document and could help you figure out what you're trying to say. The other key thing is, what does that document look like when you print it? And we think the word processor should deliver the best output that you can possibly produce with today's laser printing technology. Jim, what are the features a good word processor nowadays need? Well, really, it should be a real diverse uh, product. Uh, it needs all the full and power features that those type of users demand. Yet, it should be easy to implement uh, for all broad ranges of the users. OK, Lewis, you have a Microsoft Word you're going to show us. Right. Yeah. What I'd like to do is just show you something that really distinguishes Word, and that is its outlining feature. Here we are looking at a document. It's a brochure for a product. Turns out it's a very long document. I may get lost in it. I can quickly jump into the outline view, and now I can step back from it. It's less detailed. I have a bird's eye view. If I want to see the details about any one section, like the product overview, I can expand that mm -hmm. or quickly collapse it. Or go down here. I'll expand that and expand here, and we get the text that supports so that particular point. the outline is integrated point. into the word processor. That's, that's right. This really helps you when you're writing. It's also very, very helpful when you're trying to reorganize big sections, because I can pick up one of those points, move it someplace else, and everything attached mm -hmm. under it mm -hmm. goes along with it. Mm -hmm. You can also see we're displaying some formats on the screen. You see that part of the title is in italics. Let's take a quick look at some of the, the formats we can display on the screen. I'm going to open up a new window here. And I'm going to bring in a new document there, which displays some of our character formats. And there you can see we've got bold and underline, italics, strike through, all those double underline, all those things are displayed on the screen. OK, so you and can actually see the underlines, the bolds, the strike throughs. And right, so on. and even crazy combinations of it. Now, when you've got that kind of formatting capability, a key thing is you need a way to control that. And for us, the real way to control that, I'm going to close that, is with something called a style sheet. Style sheet lets you define all this formatting we just talked about. 
and lets you access it with a single key. So maybe I want to change this particular heading to a level five heading. And I have to find the formats in my style sheet for level five. Or I can quickly bounce it back to so level one. So in other one. words, a level five heading may be underlined and bold in italics or something. And some indented, kind of, right. You can do all those combinations. And with one keystroke, call up a particular right. uh, macro-defined format, essentially. Exactly. Now, the key thing you want to be able to do when you've got this kind of formatting control is to be able to print it that yeah. way. And let's quickly see what we give you in print formatting. If I'm setting up characters, one thing I want to do is access different fonts. And here, I'm showing you the list of fonts we support for the Apple Laser Writer, which is demonstrating our support for PostScript. So you can get out all those great features of PostScript and find out what kinds of capabilities from within Word. Now, one, of the, one of the fundamental differences in the other word processes we've seen so far is that this is a bitmap uh, graphic. Well, right, that's the also. trick to being able and to show those get formats. The fonts and, and various italics and Absolutely. things like that. Yeah. That's right. Lewis, if we can ask you to get out of Word so that Jim can show us uh, sure. Office Writer in just a second. Uh, Jim, uh, we've seen some of the obviously the biggies here, Microsoft Word and WordStar and WordPerfect. How does somebody like uh, like Office Writer, a product like Office Writer, get up there and, uh, and get out of that 600, 700 word <laughs> processors Gary was talking about? Well, I appreciate your asking. Our success has been with Fortune 500 uh, companies. Uh, we have penetrated that market. We're certainly going to continue in that same vein. Uh, of recent, we have begun concentrating some of our efforts into the resellers channel as well. Okay, show us, show us uh, Office Office Writer, uh, which is your product, and you had to get it up there somehow. <laughs> okay, there we okay. go. Now, now again, show us the features of Office Writer, and again, how do you distinguish right. your word processor from the three we've already seen? Well. When you come up with Office Writer, this is the menu that you see every time. Uh, as you'll see, we're very intuitive and very logically laid out. And what I have done in the essence of time, Office Writer comes standard with macros. Mm -hmm. uh, they are shortcuts and keyboard savers, if you will. Uh, so what I have done is uh, gone ahead and set up some of those demonstrations for our viewers to see okay. in particular areas. Uh, one of the topics being uh, desktop capability is a very hot topic these days. Okay. And what we're going to take a quick look at here is our line and box drawing. Okay. Our line and box drawing uh, automatically uh, uses, it comes out of the 10 keypad. Mm -hmm. uh, we use the page up, page down keys. Our boxes stretch out, so you're not having to draw the boxes uh, individually. Because you pull up a box, shape it, and put it where you want exactly, on the screen. Exactly, exactly. You also notice that we can come right back. You do and that without a mouse, lines. by the way, Jim. You, you sure can keyboard. do it without a. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the idea of using the 10 keypad. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is actually a macro of individual exactly. keystrokes. Exactly. Again, I've set all here, these right? up mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in the essence of time. Okay. You also notice that uh, when we come back into the program again, it prompts you constantly as to okay. what Office Writer is doing. Jim, what does the boilerplate do for you? Well, the boilerplating is. Similar in some regards to macros, mm -hmm. uh, boilerplating lets us incorporate paragraph phrases, statements from other programs and bring them right into the following document that you're into. So let's take a quick look at that. Basically what uh, I have done here is set these up again with macros and I'm pulling these in from another document. So these are phrases and statements that I've already done, so I don't have to come back and retype and yes. re-enter all the time. You define a boilerplate paragraph uh, as, as macro X or whatever it happens exactly. to be, and you press one key and you can pull that paragraph That's up. That's correct. That's correct. Any particular applications you think Office uh, Writer is unique for? I mean, any vertical approach you're taking with Well, those? really, since day one, uh, our most important aspect has been connectivity and compatibility. Uh, we shine uh, in those areas in particular, uh, graphics integration, desktop capabilities, uh, being a very intuitive, logical program, uh, having the simplicity that everyone needs, mm -hmm. yet all the power that uh, the power users seem to be asking for as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Now, Lewis uh, showed us Microsoft Word for the IBM and compatibles. We've been looking at word processors on MS-DOS machines, basically. A lot of you like to do word processing on the Macintosh. Well, some people are saying Microsoft Word on the Mac is a very powerful word processor. Wendy Woods has a report on that. TechArt, a San Francisco graphic art studio, has been using Microsoft Word 3.0 for several months. The program has won rave reviews from these people. They depend on good word processing programs to help them create professional documents. 
Probably the single feature that was in most demand that's been added to the product is a spelling checker. Uh, Word has had a spelling checker on the IBM version for some time and now finally that spelling checker or a, a version of it with a Mac interface has been brought over to the, to the Mac with version 3. Another single feature that's, that's really important with this version of Word is the use of style sheets. Style sheets essentially let us assign a complex format spec, if you will, to a small code. And then if we attach that code to subsequent paragraphs, those paragraphs will ha take on that complex format. Microsoft Word 3.0 is also exciting because it has elements found in a desktop publishing program. Graphics can be inserted and page layout can be previewed. I want the graphic side by side with the paragraph that's selected. Here we have it. This is what this page is going to print out to be. I cannot edit in this mode. This is not replacing PageMaker because it's not an interactive display. But still, it gives us an ability that, to do something that just wasn't possible before. Which is why Microsoft Word version 3 has become the program of choice at TechArt. In San Francisco for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. With us now are Michael Miller, executive editor of InfoWorld, and next to Mike is Eric Alderman, a computer columnist and a word processing expert. Mike, there's, it seems like there's all sorts of different word processors around now. Well, how does the marketplace split up for word processors? Well, we see the business marketplace for word processors dividing into three basic categories. On one hand, you have the professional word processors, and these are very sophisticated, very fast, very powerful programs, really designed for people who use word processing a lot. In this group, you'd have WordPerfect, you'd have Microsoft Word, you'd have WordStar, you'd have Xyrite. Mm -hmm. Another level is the Office Word processors, and these were basically programs designed for secretaries and for people doing a lot of memos, but typically not writing books and things. And you have Office Writer there, you also have Multimate, DisplayWrite mm -hmm. 4, and products like that. Mm -hmm. A final level is simple word processors, products that are very easy to learn, very fast, you know, just basic products. And the big player there is PFS, Professional Write, and then you also have MicroPro has a product called Easy and a couple other players as well. Okay, so these different markets are, really allow a lot of coexistence of the word yeah. process. It really depends on what you need for your particular needs right. as to which That's one of these right. you should buy. And a lot of the products uh, have some overlap and they can read files between mm -hmm. yeah. different products and things like that. Eric, uh, what about the future? You see the word process is moving to desktop publishing or is it, is it, uh, <laughs> where's it going? <laughs> I think so. And a lot of people have said that word processing programs will eventually have more desktop publishing features and desktop publishing programs will eventually have more word processing features and I'm sure we'll see that. Uh, as they emerge. Um, word processing programs uh, will eventually take on a lot of the more advanced features that we've seen in some of the products uh, in the show today. Um, Microsoft Word has style sheets, which are a very powerful tool for reformatting a document very easily, uh, especially more complex documents, reports, uh, technical documentation. Um, the laser printer control is very important as laser printers become cheaper more easily accessible, um, more of them around, it's very important that the word processing programs support them very well. Um, uh, and outlining that Microsoft Word has mm -hmm. a macros feature, or ability to customize the program is very, is very important. Uh, it's hard for the company to know exactly what you're going to want to be doing on a regular basis. So if they can provide some way of customizing the programs uh, to, for your own needs, that's a very powerful feature. You guys are both professional writers. What do you use? I split between <laughs> Microsoft Word, WordPerfect, and WordStar. I run all three really? at different points. <laughs> and Eric? Uh, I use Word, uh, Microsoft Word and WordPerfect. Uh, I go back and forth. And I've also used the Macintosh quite a bit. <laughs> Depending and, on which feature uh, you want at what particular time. That's right. So I guess that's the moral of the story. That's yes. right. Gentlemen, thanks very much. We're out of time. That's it on Word Processors. Next week, we'll start a special two-part look on spreadsheet programs, so be with us then. Right now, stay tuned for this week's Computer News. In the random access file this week, the battle between IBM and Apple for the hearts of corporate America has now moved to the software arena. With both the new Macintosh 2 and the new IBM Personal System 2 computers on the market, the race is on to see who can produce the first 32-bit operating system. While IBM announced its new operating system 2, it won't be available until 1988, 
and that means application software may not be available until 1989. So rumor has it that Apple is working furiously on its new operating system for the Mac 2, one that would allow true multitasking and access to greater memory. The operating system is reportedly codenamed Juggler. There are reports it was recently shown to some software developers and that it may be released this summer. The worm has turned in the look and feel dispute with the original developers of VisiCalc now suing Lotus, claiming that 123 copies the look and feel of VisiCalc. The suit claims $100 million in damages, despite the fact that Lotus bought the rights to VisiCalc two years ago. Lotus is, of course, suing VP Planner and the twin on the same grounds. First reports on the new IBM Model 30 are good. The Chicago Computer Society took a look at the new IBM 8086 machine and said it performed well and that its hard drive is amazingly quiet. And there are reports that some dealers are already discounting the suggested $1695 price for the Model 30. Grid Systems has announced a new AT-compatible laptop to compete with the very successful Toshiba T3100. The Grid 286 comes with a 10-meg hard drive, a 720K floppy, and 640K in RAM. The price is $3850. Time for a look at software, and here's our reviewer, Paul Schindler. Of course, I wouldn't really operate in a television studio, but some programs don't care where they operate, and IS-2000 is one of them. Now, IS-2000 is an integrated software package that's unusual for a couple of reasons. It doesn't just work under the MS-DOS operating system, it actively cooperates with MS-DOS, and it only costs $40. Now, the cooperative feature takes some explaining. You start up IS-2000 as you would any DOS program, but then IS-2000 substitutes its own file management and directory structure that allows things like 67 character file names and simple transfer of data among its many good application programs, word processing with mail merge, database management, and report generation, a spreadsheet complete with English language commands, and other goodies like a built-in RAM disk, line graphics, and even a pop-up calculator. All this, and it's simple to use as well. Every command you need can be executed from the 10 function keys, and stick-down labels are included to help you remember. Add complete documentation, and you've got an incredible bargain for your $40. IS2000 from Numenon Corporation in Alameda, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. The Internal Revenue Service, fresh from handling this year's last-minute rush of income tax returns, says it's looking into optical disk storage for its tax files. The IRS currently keeps some 2 billion tax returns on file and spends $30 million a year just to maintain the filing system. A California company named Integrated Automation has contracted with the IRS to develop a sophisticated optical storage system called Phaser, which would eventually put all IRS archives onto optical disks. The source has finally been sold by Reader's Digest to a New York venture capital firm. The new company also owns Automated Marketplace Systems, a firm specializing in electronic purchasing technology. No immediate changes in the source are expected. And rival CompuServe has announced bargain rates through the end of May. CompuServe is offering prime time service during the day at evening and weekend rates of $6 an hour for 300 baud and $12.50 an hour for 1,200 baud. Finally, Apple is not forgetting the 2GS, despite all the recent attention to the new Macs. Apple is about to launch a million-dollar direct mail campaign, sending three-dimensional pop-up cards to millions of American homes. The cards open into a 3D model of the computer. The promotion is designed to get the new 2GS into the home and education markets. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible by Leading Edge, makers of IBM-compatible computer systems, including word processing with spelling correction, communication software, and Hayes-compatible 1200 and 2400 baud modems. Leading Edge, with over 1,000 service centers nationwide. Leading Edge, leading the way to the information age. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles cover the latest in microcomputer technology throughout the world. Byte, the international standard.